titled A Tale of Three Women. Please welcome our president, Mr. Eric Weiss. So did you guys hear about the plane of lawyers that the terrorists hijacked? They sent down a list of demands and said if their demands weren't met, they would let one lawyer go every hour. <laughs> this joke has absolutely nothing to do with my speech. <laughs> That was a great introduction. It's almost <laughs> as if I wrote it myself. Yeah. <laughs> Burlington College. Have you guys heard of Burlington College? It's a Vermont institution that was headed by Jane Sanders. Jane Sanders is Bernie Sanders' wife. And Bernie Sanders' wife, Jane, thinks that Bernie is great. That's why she's married to him. They happen to share a lot of the same values. Burlington College is now out of business. Burlington College had in 2010, when Mrs. Sanders was elected to that college as a president, they decided to purchase 32 acres of land next door to them for $10 million. Now, this is a college that only had 224 students, wow. but they decided they wanted to expand by taking $10 million in debt. And she rationalized this by saying a lot of people were going to donate to her because she was going to be the next president's wife and there would be a lot of payback involved. <laughs> well, when she, this didn't happen, what do you think happened to Burlingham College? BK, bankrupt. That's socialism in action. What Margaret Thatcher said about socialists is, socialism only works until you run out of other people's money. In this case, she borrowed a bunch of other people's money with no way to pay it back, and it's now collapsed. Second person I want to talk to you about, Mother Teresa. She was recently canonized. She actually founded the Missionaries of Charity in 1950, and she had over 4,500 people working with her in her organization, and they worked for free. In other words, they worked for voluntary donations from the community that they serve. And so, what they did is they built hospitals. And the hospitals were for those with AIDS and leprosy and tuberculosis, a lot of people who weren't ever going to get better. And with the money that she did get, she didn't really spend a lot of money making them feel good by giving them drugs, because she couldn't afford to give them a lot of drugs. But what she did give them is the dignity of having a person spend time with them, which many of these people had never had that dignity before they died. And the pain that they suffered was intense. They weren't given drugs to deal with it, but they were given a caring, loving individual that they can talk to and confide with before they passed away. For this, she was awarded the 1979 Nobel Peace Prize, and she was canonized as a saint. One of the things that you may not know about her is she was rabidly anti-abortion. She viewed it as murder, and she said those exact words. Let me go ahead and repeat what she had to say about it. America needs no words from me to see how your decision in Roe versus Wade has deformed a great nation. The so-called right to abortion has pitted mothers against their children and women against men. It has shown violence and discord at the heart of the most intimate human relationships. It has aggravated the derogation of the father's role in an increasingly fatherless society. It has portrayed the greatest of gifts, a child, as a competitor, an intrusion, and an inconvenience. It has nominally accorded mothers unfettered dominion over the independent lives of their physically dependent sons and daughters, and in granting this unconscionable power has exposed many women to unjust and selfish demands from their husbands or other sexual partners. Human rights are not a privilege conferred by government. They are every human being's entitlement by virtue of his humanity. The right to life does not depend and must not be declared to be contingent on the pleasures of anyone else, not even a parent or a sovereign. Strong, strong words. And as part of her charity, that's what she did. She, as in any charitable organization, comes with a set of values. And she shares those values with those that she cares about. Because she actually does believe that those values are the best values to help you have a meaningful existence, a pleasurable life, and a place in the afterlife. Charities collapse, though, when capitalists 
stop their voluntary contributions. And now I'm going to go ahead and talk about the third person, Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Winfrey is the quintessential capitalist. She is a multi-billionaire. She's one of the top 50 wealthiest people in our country. And she got that way through trade. She got that way by giving us something that most Americans, I don't actually watch her show, but I assume somebody out there does because her ratings are amazing. She even told everyone to vote for Obama and supposedly people credit her with a million votes as a result of her decision to vote for Obama. She's very influential a lot for among uh, a lot of people. And she is a success story. But she's a success story not because she's helpless or not because she's a not-for-profit. She gives them entertainment. She gives them self-help classes. She gives them TV. She gives them radio. She gives them plays. And people pay money voluntarily and get something in value greater than what they pay. Now, a lot of people who are watching TV don't think that they're paying. But in fact, what's happening is they're watching the advertisements. And the advertisements make them go out and occasionally buy what they see in those commercials. The advertisers know that, so they sponsor the shows. And they pay her a huge amount of money because of the ratings she has for people who want to see what they consider free, but really is in fact a trade, a trade of their time. They pay for the electricity to watch the TV. They pay for the big expensive TV. And they eventually go out and they buy all those products that are advertised. So it is a trade. It is a trade in which they feel they're getting more than what they're paying. That's capitalism. That's what Adam Smith talked about. And that's what makes America great. America is the greatest, most powerful, wealthiest country in the history of the world. Not because we demand huge amounts of taxes from people and give it to socialists. Not because we take money out of your pocket and give it to not-for-profits, or at least that's not the way the system's supposed to work. The majority of the time, we are trading rather than redistributing money in our society. And Oprah Winfrey is a perfect example of how people can become billionaires through trading and giving more value to those that they entertain than what it costs in return. Now, what has Oprah Winfrey done with a lot of that money? She has donated millions and millions of it to not-for-profits, which gets back to what I was talking about before. <coughs> if you like St. Therese, if you like your favorite not-for-profit, the YMCA, if you like the blood bank, a lot of these places don't provide a benefit that people pay for without voluntary contributions from capitalists. Capitalists are the ones who make the free cash flow, the ones that have money at the end of the year who can decide to do with it whatever they want. They can go buy one of the products that they watched on TV, they can go and donate it to their church, or they can go and give the money to Mother Teresa, or if they're really feeling sorry for a socialist, they can go vote for Bernie Sanders. However they decide to spend their time and money, it is voluntary. But it's not always voluntary. When the socialists actually get elected, nothing becomes voluntary after that. If you look at some of the socialistic countries around the world, you'll know that Russia got ahead in its early Bolshevik career by stealing all of the land from the kulaks. They came and nationalized it. Nationalizing is another word for stealing. It's called government theft. And they took over all this private property and made it state property. And then nobody wanted to go out and take all the weeds out and work 14-hour days because at the end of every year, that portion of land was given to whoever was politically connected. Not to the person who slaved away at it for a whole year, but to the friend of the buddy who was in charge who happened to be a communist. And what you guys should remember is the Communist Party is only 2% of the Russians. 2% of the country controls and exploits the other 98%. It is actually a modern form of slavery. You know, people think that slavery has been gotten rid of, not in totalitarian governments. There's totalitarian governments that essentially treat 98% of its people like slaves. Russia is slowly but surely trying to bring in some market reforms. It's starting to, to bring in private property, so it's not a completely totalitarian system. 
but still there's no transparency, there's no parties to keep people honest, corruption is everywhere. Let's look at another place. Venezuela is falling apart right now. Venezuela has confiscated most of the wealth of all of its wealthiest people. And it also nationalized the companies that came in that knew what they were doing in order to exploit the, the wealth that was in the sea, the oil. See, Americans come in and think that we need to make money to make the shareholders happy. So they invest a huge amount of money in some of these places that really aren't safe. And then they promise 50% of the profits to the government. But the government is greedy, especially evil socialistic communist governments. So 50% is never enough. It goes to 50, then to 60, then to 70. And then finally the companies that are actually manufacturing the wealth said, we can't make any money if you're exploiting 70 or 80% of the profits. We need to rebuild this place. And they said, we don't care. Now we're going to take over the whole company. We're nationalizing it. We're stealing the company from American stockholders. They did this in Iraq. They've done it in Venezuela. They do it all over the world. And we need to learn about this and not allow it to happen here in America. Because the next time a socialist is elected in America will be the last time we have a real election. So I have talked about the benefits that accrue to our society because we glorify the businessman. Let me step back and point out another thing. There's not a majority of this country right now who are willing to vote for Bernie Sanders. Thank God. There is not a majority of those people who want to be St. Teresa. She has 5,000 disciples. That's a lot. It's way more than most smaller companies. But you don't really get much for being a disciple of Mother Teresa. You get poverty and you get to work with six people, sick people every day and everyone you care about is dying in front of you. The most that she can get is about 5,000 people and they live in some of the poorest countries of the world. And I give her kudos and I love her for it and she deserves her sainthood, but it's not going to encourage a lot of Americans to go follow her. However, look at the rich people in our society. If you go out there and you talk about Oprah, thousands and thousands of people want to be Oprah. Thousands and thousands of people want to be Conrad Previs. Thousands and thousands of people want to be the next Steve Jobs or the next Bill Gates or the next person who designs like Hewlett Packard a, a new transistor or a new radio or something new. We are the most innovative, most insightful society that this planet has ever seen. And that's why we're wealthy. And that's why we're generous. And because of the generosity of the capitalists, we can keep people like Mother Teresa employed. So what prompted all of this? I was in church the other day, and the priest said to me, I would like to try and understand why if you give a person a fish, you are called a saint. But if you ask them why they don't have fish, now you're a communist. Well, I pondered this for a while, and I came to this speech. Because there's a third way. And the third way doesn't involve socialism, and it doesn't involve necessarily only not-for-profits. What it involves is what we are great at, building wealth. And it's not a bad thing. Everyone benefits when you build wealth because we trade to get it. We don't steal to get it. We don't redistribute to get it, at least not most of the time. Most of the time we build it by giving each other a product or a service that we all want more than the money that it costs to get it. And that's why our society is rich. And that's why if we continue to defend and promote capitalism, the builders, the innovators, the people who create stuff, the ones that give us our great cell phone, our nice big screen TV, the fabulous programming, and the Oprah Winfrey uh, films for whoever actually watches those things. As long as we continue to do that, we will continue to grow as a society and will continue to be the most charitable and most generous of any society the world has ever seen.